Indonesia, an archipelago nation of over 17,000 islands with a population of around 270 million people. The country is home to hundreds of ethnicities, cultures, languages and religions. Indonesia's wildlife is perhaps the world's richest and most diverse. Still to be found in parts of the vast nation are Asian elephants, orangutans, leopards, bears, and endemic species such as Javanese rhinos, Sumatran tigers, and Komodo dragons. Indonesia's plant life is also among the world's richest and most diverse. Just over half of the country is still covered by forest, including almost 8% of the world's remaining primary forest. Karena pertama, seperti kita lihat di sekeliling kita, ini adalah hutan rawa gambut salah satu yang terbesar ekosistem rawa gambut terbesar di Indonesia yang fungsinya luar biasa untuk menyerap karbon dan um, dalam krisis iklim saat ini sangat penting untuk mempertahankan keberadaannya kedua dia adalah merupakan habitat orang hutan dan juga bagi EIA ini merupakan tempat pertama kali EIA dan juga telapak memulai kampanye illegal logging. Following a severe economic crisis, Indonesia's dictator of over 30 years, Haji Mohamed Suharto, is forced to step down. For decades, the country's very lucrative logging sector has been controlled by Suharto and his cronies. Suharto's personal wealth is believed to be in the region of 38 billion US dollars. Almost overnight, central government's iron grip on the country disappears. The fall of Suwato had created chaos. There was a, a power vacuum as the highly centralized military Javanese dictatorship fell apart with all the very, very hierarchical systems controlled from Java out right across the archipelago. All of that was starting to unravel uh, and there was burgeoning corruption at multiple levels. El Nino causes some of the worst forest fires Indonesia has ever seen. Millions of hectares of forest are destroyed. Alarmed at some of the reports they hear, a small team of British activists from EIA begin a fact-finding mission. We went over to Borneo um, and we were, we were trying to find out what was really going on. It was, there was an El Nino going on, there were fires everywhere, we knew this. Um, but why and what was happening and what was being done about it? And, and we drove sometimes for hours across an area that had been thick forest and was now just a... a a mess, it was black, it was uh, dark, you felt, you, you actually felt it as you went through it. It was devoid of any life. The Environmental Investigation Agency is an NGO based in London. Its mission is to protect, respect and celebrate the natural world for the benefit of all. EIA uses a combination of video investigation, advocacy and campaigning to pursue its goals. The forest fires continue to rage. 
Millions more hectares of forest are destroyed. The impact on people and wildlife is immense. We talk to people about the wildlife in the area of which there wasn't any anymore because it had been burnt out. But they told us of stories of, of orangutans, for instance, that, that would be racing away from the fires to try and escape. And the area is littered with water and rivers and, and canals, too, that have been built. And if a orangutan comes against water, it can't swim. And so the orangutans were just being burnt to death. And, and the people there, the Dayaks, they felt it was some, the heart of the place had gone, the soul of the place had gone. In London, EIA released their first report on the crisis in Indonesia's forests. The politics of extinction outlines how corruption, nepotism, lack of governance, high timber prices and a huge thirst for land for palm oil plantations all contribute to the accelerated destruction of Indonesia's remaining forests and the shrinking habitat of the country's wildlife. Putting out our report at the time, The Politics of Extinction, um, was really more of a response than an actual decision. Once we'd published our report, uh, we took stock again. We, we, it had been a good scoping trip. We'd learned a lot. We got a good feel for how we might be able to operate in Indonesia. Back in 1967, Suharto had pushed through a law which transferred control of most of the country's land to the state. I arrived in Indonesia six months after Suharto fell. The government of Indonesia invited the UK government to work with it to see what could be done to sort out uh, the problems in the forest sector. Using the forest fires as cover, criminal gangs and timber mafias move in to many of the country's national parks. Protected under the Suharto regime, these are places of great beauty, biodiversity and ecological importance. Most are primary forests, abundant with mature hardwoods and established populations of wildlife. Primary forests, also termed primeval, virgin and old growth, are naturally regenerating ancient forests of native tree species. They exhibit advanced and unique ecological features and display few signs of human activity or impact. We were looking by then for a partner and we felt also that we'd met um, in Telepac, an organisation that had not just the same ideas in terms of what could go forward, but that we could help with the investigative side and they could help us with understanding how to move forward within Indonesia. Ayo, jalan bareng, kerja bareng, seru-seru. Kupikir itu yang satu-satu, ya, alasan kedua adalah alasan yang misalnya memang kejahatan kehutanan, penghancuran hutan, yang terjadi itu rasanya, rasanya telapak dan EIA bisa berbuat sesuatu. Jadi kami beruntunglah eh, telapak ya yang baru mulai uh, belum tahu apa-apa gitu kan. Terus ketemu terus memperoleh ilmu, memperoleh uh, cara pandang, cara lihat dan cara kerja, keterampilan yang sangat tajam itu. Telepak was founded in Bogor near Jakarta in the mid 90s by a group of students studying environment related subjects. The name translates from Bahasa as footprint. The organization's remit is to advocate for the just and sustainable management of Indonesia's natural resources and to create and sustain a nationwide network of environmentally active people. We decided rather than to go for everything, we would focus on one thing, and that was illegal logging. Talapak has some good up-to-date information about the situation on the ground in central Kalimantan, where this national park called Tanjan Puting, we'd heard was being heavily logged. And the reason we were interested in Tanjan Puting is it was a globally famous uh, nature reserve, and it had a very famous population of orangutans. And we felt that if logging could be so brazen in a place like that, then you know Indonesia's forests would be lost. For most of the next year, joint teams from EIA and Telepak investigate forest crime around Indonesia. They focus on the national parks of Borneo and Sumatra. 
The teams are using EIA's relatively new methodology, video investigation. Sony's new format DV camcorder is a technological leap and a game changer in the industry. It's small, robust and easy to use and becomes their weapon of choice in their fight to save Indonesia's remaining forests. Jadi, yang pertama-tama ngajari cara memotret dan memvideokan itu Dave tuh. Jadi di telapak kantor telapak yang lama ada sofa merah itu kan. Yeah. Dave duduk di sini, saya duduk di sini, di sini kamera. Nah, sedangkan setelah tentang teknis teknis kamera itu hanya dikasih tahu oh ini cekrek. <laughs> yang lain-lainnya saya hanya nggak nggak ada yang perlu ingat itu. Jadi uh, intinya kan apa intinya ya? Kalau video intinya jangan goyang-goyang gitu doang. <laughs> Salah. Ketika kita tidak dapat mengendalikan baik dengan regulasi maupun dengan aparat keamanan dalam hal ini polisi dan polisi kehutanan maka pelibatan civil society masyarakat dimungkinkan One of the first joint research trips is to the Tangjung Puting National Park in southern Borneo Investigators found illegal logging in every part of the park. The area has been divided up by illegal loggers and even trucks are used on roads built by loggers within the park boundaries. Logging rails, used to move the logs out, were discovered throughout the area. Piles of valuable ramen logs are stored along the river and logging camps litter the riverbank. At the mouth of the river, in full view of the authorities, logs are loaded onto large steel barges. The kingpin in these activities is timber baron Abdul Rasit, who owns factories on the nearby Arut River and has close links with the military and police. Mr. Rasit's nephew, Sugianto, showed one of the factories to EIA and Talapak investigators who were posing as businessmen. Part of the Tangjun Linga company group, this ramen factory loads unmarked ramen from rafts, dries it in drying rooms and processes it into mouldings and blinds for export to Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan and the USA. Responding to new information, the team then travel on to the Losa ecosystem in northern Sumatra. EIA and Telepak investigators followed illegal loggers into the national park and filmed them preparing their logging camp. Loggers are paid a few dollars per day by the sawmill owners and are supplied the chainsaw and a repayable loan which binds them to these powerful businessmen. Investigators followed logging trucks to the local sawmills. It's the big men that have to be gone after. That's the sawmill owners, the people that own the factories, and those people within the authorities, the military, the police, the forest department, who are also making money out of this. EIA and Telepak's work in Indonesia is getting noticed. I bumped into Dave Curry in a very remote area of forests in Aceh with um, his Indonesian colleagues uh, and thought, you know, this must be one of the few organisations, international organisations, in partnership with uh, Indonesian groups who was really documenting what was really happening in places where, you know, few people were going. EIA was willing to get its boots dirty, get off the beaten track. This area has the highest density of orangutans anywhere in the world. The final cut is launched at a press conference in Jakarta. The report and accompanying video investigation stun everyone present and around the country. 
And the report was very hard hitting. It named names. It did all this kind of stuff. Now, they'd never seen that kind of press conference ever before in Indonesia. Remember, it had been a dictatorship. There was oppression about all of that. This was the first time an environmental group had come and given this kind of presentation with the evidence, with the photos, with the video, with the names. And it was so well attended. We had CNN, we had BBC, we had Reuters, we had, we had every, all the, all the big internationals were there, but the locals were there too. I was sitting at the back and Indonesians were, I think, gobsmacked. They had come out of a 30 year dictatorship where the press had been constrained you only saw state-controlled TV, so a lot of people, certainly those living in the city of Jakarta on Java, had no idea of what was going down in their forests. And, and they were not used to frank, open conversation and expose of things. And it had a huge impact on them. I think that was the beginning of the a sort of real awakening of some kind of envir environmental awareness, but also a sense that this was their resource and it had been stolen from them. It's a good time for us to be bringing in our, our call for action to the government. And we made it very clear that if you can't take action in tangent pudding, then you can't save any forest in Indonesia because tangent pudding was so well known and it was so brazen what was going on. It was just outright robbery. Kami kontak pertama kali dengan IAIA ya, Telapak ketika menyajikan film yang apa ya? Film yang termasuk berani. Now established as credible and serious players, IAIA and Telapak decide to continue their partnership. So the final cut opened doors for us. Um, Telepak and EIA were taken seriously now, were people that knew about these issues. Um, we could talk to diplomatic missions, we could talk to other NGOs, um, we could talk to the media. Uh, we, were, we were a serious part of the game, if you like. <laughs> 